as you see here, you'll see hot combs. That's what we call them, hot combs or pressing combs. And this is very historical in the black culture of black females. And the person to give credit to this is Madam C.J. Walker. And her name is Sarah Breedlove. She was born December 23rd, 1867. She died May 25th, 1919, known as, her name is Madam C.J. Walker, was an African-American entrepreneur and philanthropist, and a political and social activist. She eulogized as the first female self-made millionaire in America. She became one of the wealthiest African-American women in the country, the world's most successful female entrepreneur of her time, and one of the most successful African-American business owners ever. Walker made her fortune by developing and marketing the line of beauty and hair care products for black women through Madam C.J. Walker Manufacturing Company. The successful business owner she founded, Walker, was also known for her philanthropy and activism. She made financial donations to numerous organizations and became a patron of the arts. Villa Liwaro, Walker's lavish estate in Irvington on Hudson, New York, served as a social gathering place for African American community. Breedlove was born December 23, 1867, near the Delta, Louisiana, to an Owen and Minerva Anderson Breedlove. Sarah was one of six children, which included an older sister, Lavina, and four brothers, Alexander, James, Solomon, Owen, Jr., Breedlove's parents, and her older siblings were enslaved on Robert W. Burney's Madison Parish Plantation. But Sarah was the first child in her family born into freedom after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. Her mother died possibly of cholera in 1872. Her father remarried, but he died within a few years. Orphaned at age seven, Sarah moved to Vicksburg, Mississippi, and at age of 10, and worked as a domestic. Prior to her first marriage, she lived with her older sister, Lovina, and brother-in-law, Jesse Powell. Okay, so that is a pioneer in black hair care and so there has been a lot of stereotypes and a lot of drama around black women and their hair and so for example there was a time that black females black males couldn't wear their hair in their natural state or at least black females you were talked about or you were demonized or you were t told you were too ethnic or it looked unkept or it looked like it was bad hair that's probably where they get those terms bad hair and you couldn't get hired a job so madam cj walker she was the pioneer of the pressing comb and what happens with the pressing comb it builds up heat and it changes the state of your natural hair as an Afro-American person or an African descent person. So our hair tends to be coily. We, as a pride, will wear uh, braids, our African hairstyles, um, braids, it could be dreads, it could be extensions. And a lot of times you are made fun of because of embracing your culture. And now today, you have a little more freedom to wear your hair either straight, bobbed, short, cropped, um, layered. But the thing is, is, our hair is sensitive. And a lot of people, despite what they think, they think that our hair is rough, our hair is coarse, and our hair doesn't, you know, doesn't break off, but it does. If we put too many chemicals in our hair, this is what we'll get. We'll end up bald. Uh, a lot of times, these chemicals that they have, you'll see in a lot of beauty supply shops. Some people are professionals. They know how to do hair, so they know how to apply the chemicals within uh, reason where it's safe. 
but some people will overdo it and this is the end result when they overdo it and they don't know what they're doing and it can be very damaging so we have different styles sometimes we're inspired by music artists or actresses or TV celebrities <laughs> but we're inspired by ourselves as well because you have people who have their own style so we'll wear our hair straight kinky curls dreads braids bobtail presses curls short long so black women tend to spend a lot of money on their hair put a lot of energy into their hair so it's the same as any woman like when you don't want people messing up your hair you don't want people putting their hands in there and they've been touching tables and grounds and whatever you don't know where their hands have been it's insulting to just grab on black woman's hair and start touching it without asking permission so it's only uh, a courtesy of kindness to ask permission to touch our hair a lot of times people think it's funny or they they try to be abusive or race use racial uh, epithets with it but the, you're gonna see women with braids older younger um, it's it's sort of a, a cultural it's more like a cultural thing it's also a protective styles protects our hair from the elements and also it gives our hair time to to kind of um, recuperate from like hair drying and um, blow dryers and, and harsh chemicals and whatnot and, and uh, wear and tear of combs and brushes and whatnot and so you'll have hair uh, that is shorter and coarser or in tight coils some women will prefer to wear their hair short or longer and afros um, even if you're an older woman of color you you have gray hair there's a way to wear your hair and still look beautiful at the same time even if you feel like oh gray hair is not gonna look good but gray hair looks beautiful so you can be gray hair you can have like black hair you can have hair that's colored dyed um, so we have uh, many versatile ways of wearing our hair this is more a symbolism of what happened in the earlier part of the 70s later part of the 60s earlier part of the 70s when they had the civil rights movements a lot of times this was a symbol of, of a culture and pride to wear your hair in its natural state as an afro so you do still see women that are coming back to this again because it's a sign of uh, pride in our culture and actually our hair is much more stronger much more healthier in its natural state and this is what we were forbid to wear back in that time you wouldn't get hired if you wore your hair in braids or if you wore your hair in this fashion where it was in an afro because it looked too ethnic or it looked too you know natural or it was just too you know it was coined as being bad hair and so I believe that's where that phrase came from the bad hair so um, black people African American people hair is not bad at all it is very strong it coils it curls it's just in tighter uh, a tighter compact and in curls uh, like a tighter coil and it's just a different texture of hair there's different types of textures some women you hear on like a lot of videos on YouTube and other videos like you'll see hair hair people like who are into hair whether it's straight or it's natural they'll say they got 4B hair 4C hair 4E hair whatever <laughs> so there's different textures or grades of hair you know some may be softer some may be a little more coarser and so you you treat your hair in a such fashion so you won't damage it so you're going to see Madam TJ Walker again um, she she died in 1919 at age 52 and the Walker Theater, a cultural arts center, opened in Indianapolis in her honor and became she became the first African American woman on the United States Post Office stamp in 1998. So when you go to a beauty supply shop and you see pressing combs and you see like hot irons, um, I know that now you'll you'll find like even before you find other women of that weren't black using hot irons and stuff but if you see hot combs you know where it first originated where it first originated um, in terms of african-american culture and hair so we we spend a lot of money on our hair 
sometimes because of the fuss about our hair um, and the time it takes to do our hair and like braids and different styles that are real challenging um, people will charge you accordingly for the hours of labor that it takes for them to do all of that and so a lot of times it can be hard to find people who are really good at doing hair at a reasonable uh, price so you'll see clips of kids who have press and curls bobtails um, shirley temple curls is what we call them or braids cornrows cornrows is like when you have like braids that are in rows on your head and they're stationary and they're fashioned in a way as if it, you were looking at a cornfield and so the braids kind of go different directions but usually they go that well now you have different styles of cornrows different types of braids styles so there's a, a whole lot of braid styles a whole lot of different styles at african-american people or bl uh, black people will do so you see the woman with her hair in her natural state don't be fooled by this because her hair could be extremely long it could be past her her bottom even so a lot of times our hair is very compact like i said it can coil um our hair do does well in like moisture and oil um it's the opposite for other cultures sometimes they don't want a lot of oil in their hair so they try to do a lot of more washing more frequently so you won't find um, African-American or people of color washing their hair too too frequently because what it does it, it dries our hair out or in, in its natural state and our hair will tend to break and become really brittle and dry and um, it will break off completely and we'll be bald so also braiding our hair too tight will take off our edges so you'll see some women who have braided their hair extremely tight or they've had braids in too long and um, their edges will be gone or there'll be a lot of hair thinning and alopecia will take hold um, so you see like the woman before she had the twisties because our hair coils and then you'll see like a wash and set like maybe the woman here in this clip she'll have like a roller set where like maybe it was blow dried in rollers and then when they take the hair out of the rollers after she's been under the dryer and her hair has been you know finger combed it it becomes this way and so this woman has a weave so you will find bl um, more a lot of uh, african-american women with weaves and also it can serve as a protective style protecting their own hair from the elements now underneath some w women that wear weaves have a lot of long hair underneath it so don't be fooled don't think just because she's wearing a weave she must have short hair or don't have any hair she may have long hair under there sometimes some women will overdo it and they will do damaging things to their hair like wear harsh glues harsh things in their hair and then they yank their hair out and then they pull their hair out and the weave is is damaging so each and every person is different and how they tear, take care of their hair is, is a different story altogether so you'll see the different weave products there's um hair extensions and whatnot in beauty supply shops so a lot of times black women will get scrutiny for hair it starts even as a child and people will pick on you and call you nappy head or they'll make fun of your hair and talk about oh you have bad hair and so it hurts our feelings a lot um it makes us insecure which we really shouldn't be because you can't control who you are you know <laughs> uh, culturally so this is a like a young girl who is ex extremely happy about her hair extremely happy about who she is um not to say that the other one wasn't it's just being you know example of being made fun of but you have braids cornrows and then you have um alice walker she's a writer she's wearing dreads so some people will wear natural hair and dreads in their natural state and that's also um it's not a protective style it's more of like a permanent style because um dreads are a little more permanent they actually stay in and um when the hair sheds over time it it coils and it coils so tight that you can't comb it out so it's called dreads so it has political uh, statement behind it as well so despite what you've heard black women do swim uh, they can wear a swimming cap 
they want to protect their hair or they cannot wear a swimming cap but a lot of times people will wear a swimming cap because they put chlor chlorine in the water and chlorine is a chemical so a lot of times it can damage your hair no matter what culture you are so um i'm gonna read to you like really quick about um black female by the name of simone manuel who becomes the first black woman to win in the olympic swimming goal she's a 20 year old simone manuel who became the first african-american female swimmer to take gold in the rio olympics in an individual event on a thursday night so she's a native of sugarland texas who attends stanford university she surged home in the final half of the second lap to swim in a time of 52 um 70 in usa today so there is um uh, an article about simone manuel so despite what you've heard black women do swim they all wear a swimming cap if they want to protect their hair from the water um will wear braids there's different things that you can wear to protect your hair from chlorine and whatnot and you know if you're gonna be in a sport if you're gonna exercise and be physical uh, depending on what it is that you're doing you may want to wear a swim cap and so there are products out there that protect the hair if you're an african-american descent and it, you're worried about hair damage from chemicals and whatnot so that would be the only reason why a woman would not swim if if she didn't have a swim cap but that is not the case right so you know that's not true so black women do swim we will get our hair wet there was this mean rumor going around on youtube and some of the other social websites that black women won't get their hair wet and they won't swim so that put let's put that to rest that's not that is entirely untrue so you have Halle berry and she has a, a closer cropped hair and she reminds me a little bit of a singer um i was trying to think of her name but she wore her hair close to her head and she was almost like the the queen of wearing the short crop hairstyles holly berry was one that would do that and um tony braxton and i should have had a, a picture of her but she kind of wore her hair like holly berry she actually did that a lot and so whether you wear your hair in a weave or you wear it straight or you wear it in braids this is a model imani she used to be married believe it or not to um david bowie and then you're gonna also see uh grace jones she's more natural she wears her hair short and she's you know these are women who are models and they're african and uh, African women or African descent women and so they wear their hair um, very stylish either way so despite what you've heard black um, uh, women can wear many different styles be very versatile swim get their hair wet so I thought this is pretty good and you're gonna see this right here black girls rock and that is sort of for like the encouragement of black women because of all of the the racism and the mistreatment of women and the, the stereotypes which were untrue but celebrating black women's hair